Now, maximum peak performance for a CPU is a very important uh, number, very important to look at it, and it's useful to compare different uh, CPU designs. However, it's not the only number that we can use. Another one, for example, would be sustained performance. What happens if you run a particular piece of software, a particular task for 10, 20, 30 minutes? Does the CPU slow down due to thermal throttling? And another number we can look at is performance per watt. How much performance do you get? How much can be achieved per watt? And in this video, I'm going to look at the performance per watt of the Google Tensor G3 uh, system on a chip. Of course, very relevant as you get it in the Pixel 8 phones right now, and I'm sure Google will be using it also in future phones coming soon. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the power and performance of the Google Tensor G3. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves what is the Google Tensor G3. So it's an SOC, system on a chip for mobile devices, for the Pixel devices, for example. And it's manufactured by uh, Samsung, designed by Google itself, probably in collaboration with Samsung, as it does share a lot of similarities with other chips that Samsung make. Of course, Google add in the Tensor bit, that's the machine learning uh, stuff on top. When it comes to the CPU, we've got nine CPU cores. That's quite unusual. Nine cores. One Cortex X3 clocked to a maximum of 2.91 gigahertz. Four Cortex A715s clocked to a maximum of 2.37 gigahertz. And then four Cortex A510s clocked to a maximum of 1.7 gigahertz. So that's nine cores in total. There's an ARM Mali G715 GPU. And as I say, it's built by Samsung. So that's on Samsung's four nanometer process. Now, this is not the first video I've done on these power performance things. If you want to know more about how I do the testing, do go back and look at my other videos. But just to recap quickly, basically I take a rooted device. In this case, it was a Pixel 8. And then because it's rooted, I'm able to control which CPU core my benchmarks are running on. I'm allowed to control the maximum CPU uh, frequency, which means I can then see how the performance is at each frequency step. And I'm also allowed to set the governor in this case, I set it to performance. Basically means I've got full control over what CPU the test runs on and at what speed, and that's how I'm able to get these measurements. I also then have something for measuring the amount of energy, amount of power being used by the smartphone. So there together, I can combine all that and give us these results. Okay, so this is a plot of the performance against the frequency. As we can see, they are straight lines. There's no funky stuff going on where it's going up and down, up and down. But there are a few important things to note. First of all, down in that bottom left-hand corner, we can see that the each CPU starts at a different frequency. So the A510s have a much lower frequency as their starting point, okay, than the A715 and the X3. The second thing to note is that the, the these three devices are, as they are meant to be, the A510 is the lowest performance chip, the A715 is the middle performance chip, and the X3 is the highest performance chip. So we can see that as well. And we can see that as you increase the uh, clock frequency, you increase performance, which is exactly what you'd expect. But the important thing also is the gradient of the lines. So if you look at the um, each one, they are kind of, they're not as steep as each other. Now the A715 and the X3 are close, but the uh, A510, as you can see, is very different. If you extended that out, uh, you know, logically to the end, of course, you can't because it's a lower clock frequency. But if you did, you can see there's a huge performance gap there between what the X3 and the A510. And in fact, even lower down, you can see that at the same clock frequency, the A510 is doing uh, less, it's less performance. But of course, the idea is, of course, it's not using so much power. And that's what we'll look at in a minute. So though you don't get the same raw performance, you get less power use. That's why it's the power efficiency cores rather than the high performance cores. Okay, so here is frequency matched against power. So again, we can see the three chips are lined up uh, in the right order. So power efficiency on the left, middle core there in the middle, the light blue one, and then the darker blue one is the X3. So as you ramp up the frequency, they use more power. And that's true of all three. They both follow that same kind of curve. Uh, but of course, the curves are different in size because again, the A510 has a, a cutoff point, only able to uh, have a certain clock frequency. And that's interesting because you can see that at its max clock frequency, it's still using less than 
well, what's that about 0.3 of a watt, I suppose, they're just looking at it on the graph. Whereas if you look at the X3 right up at its max frequency, it's actually over two watts. So a huge difference in what they uh, can achieve. But the point is, is that with all these things, when you ramp up the uh, clock speed, you're gonna use more power. Now, if you look here at the one gigahertz mark, you can see very clearly that at one gigahertz, they each use different amounts of power from the left to right according to their design it's not the performance this is just the clock frequency and how much power it will use more power there's more circuitry one of them is in order the other two are out of order there's prefetches there's loads of stuff uh, going on that means that the chip uses more power at the same frequency this is an interesting thing to note here you go from one watt to two watt for the x3 while increasing the frequency but only by 27 percent so as you get to the tail end of what these chips can do you can ramp up that clock frequency you can go much much higher okay but you actually double the power usage for only a 27 percent increase in clock frequency so that's why you don't run these things at four gigahertz or five gigahertz or or so on but there are several reasons for that that's one of the reasons that you can just keep on upping the frequency theoretically and uh, of course you don't necessarily you just increase keep on increasing the power and you may not get that uh, such a big improvement of performance compared to how much power you're using. Okay, so this is really the telltale graph. This is now the power uh, against the performance. So actually what actual performance you get from the chip, how quickly it can perform a certain task, how many calculations it can do for that amount of power. Now, if we zoom in here, we can see right down at the bottom that this is where the 510 has uh, a good uh, a starting point. It does very well. Uh, it's really the chip to use uh, using very little power uh, right up to a certain point. And then once that point comes along, you can see that the A715 is actually the better chip to use because it's giving you greater performance for the same amount of power. In fact, when you look at that crossover point, the A510 there is running at 1.3 gigahertz to achieve the same performance that the A715 is giving you at 1 gigahertz. That's why we talk about the different chip designs offer different performance because there's more complicated stuff going on. As I said, in order, out of order, and all that other kind of stuff, all that stuff that they do when they design the micro architecture. And so now at one gigahertz, it's able to give you the same performance as an A510 running at 1.3 gigahertz. Of course, at that point, because it's running at a higher clock speed, it starts to use more power and actually it's better to switch to the A510, which at one gigahertz using less power, but gives you the same performance. And we'll see that kind of crossover uh, as well for the over into the X3's domain. So here we're back out to the graph and we can see here in the middle of the graph, there is this moment where the A715 starts to plateau and it would be better to switch over to the X3, that point there. And again, we get this difference in clock speed. So at this level of performance, so we've got, this is how much, performance given how quickly it can do a certain task at this moment here the a715 is running at 2.1 gigahertz to achieve the same performance that the x3 is doing at 1.8 gigahertz and at this point you get the crossover of the power usage better to go over to the uh, x3 because it's doing more in the same power budget and of course ultimately as we know it goes on right to the end because you don't clock the A715 to the same clock frequency, uh, you, you clock it much lower, but the X3 goes up and up and up, but of course it uses more power as I showed you in that other graph. And the last uh, little graph here, I've put the X1 onto the graph as well, just so that we can see how things have progressed since the X1. So the, the blue line there towards the right is the X1. Now, because it's towards the right, that means it's offering, it's offering less performance and uses more power. So the good thing is we can see the A715 and the X3 are to the left and slightly higher, uh, particularly with the X3. So that means it's giving you better performance for less power. And interestingly enough, right over there, that midpoint there, you can see the A715 and the X3 again plot very, very close to each other. So one thing to note, though, is that the X1 here was tested in the Snapdragon 888. That's what my previous video is about and that uses Samsung's five nanometer process. So as well as the changes in the microarchitecture, we can also see reflected here the differences when you go from five nanometer to four nanometer, previously it was seven nanometer, you know, and so on. So that does have an impact on the power usage and also on the clock speed you can use and also the power and the performance ratios that you get. So one good thing, we're seeing better power performance 
in all of the chips compared to previous generations uh, and that's of course what we expect to see and what we want to see as we keep progressing different market architectures and different process nodes. Okay, so that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. More videos to come. I've got more uh, phones that I'm trying to test with different processors so we can see the different performance characteristics of other uh, CPU core designs. So if you want to find out about those, do stick around by subscribing to the channel. If you like this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.